why does every single website today look like this? These are all AI generated designs and AI has a purple problem. Ask an AI to design a website or web app and it's almost always going to kick out some slop that looks like Barney himself went and raised a seed round of venture capital. <laughs> so stupid fuck. AI just loves purple. You got purple hero gradients, purple buttons, purple backgrounds, and its favorite purple gradient text. Mwah. So purple has unfortunately become the M dash of web design. And it's often surrounded by its buddy's centered text, emoji icons, and copious drop shadow. So let's talk about how this became a problem. <laughs> So, and how we can fix it. Vibe coders are taking to AI tools and churning out slop at a clip we have never yet seen before. And to be clear, I'm mostly all for this. It's allowing people to create things that they previously have never had the skill or time to build. But we're at a point now where I will not trust a piece of software that is both new and purple because I can smell it from a hundred miles away. That thing has been vibe coded and along with it comes questionable quality and questionable security practices. So where the hell did all of this purple come from? Well, I went to the, the darkest, the purplest corners of the web to find out where did all of this purple come from? Yeah, so I'm Adam Wappen and uh, I'm the guy who created Tailwind CSS. Anytime you visit a website, you can almost instantly tell if it was generated by AI or not based on the use of the the color purple and often this like purple to pink gradient that shows up a lot of the time too <laughs> yeah the gradient like that move of using the like webkit background clip text or whatever that CSS was mm -hmm. AI absolutely ruined it that loves, move it and I love the gradient love that. text yeah it's almost like a snapshot of the design trends from when the model was trained, you know what I mean? And it's it's also like the bad version of it a lot of the time because it's just, it's not exclusively trained on well-designed websites, you know, it's just trained on whatever is out there, so. The actual color purple, I'm trying to narrow down like, like where did this actual purple come from? And, and everybody uh -huh. keeps pointing back to you. Did you make I, AI I, love the color purple? I can't, you know, we can never know for sure what <laughs> where the robot's knowledge comes from, but back in, <laughs> you know, early 2020, we released Tailwind UI, which was like our big official um, kind of example component UI block directory for, for Tailwind. And we chose Indigo as like the primary brand color for everything. And um, we did that because it was kind of like the hot color at the time, like Shopify was using it, Linear was using it, Stripe was using it. All the sites that everyone thought looked nice were using that color. And we just, any other color we picked just didn't feel like it was as nice because we were comparing it to like what everybody else liked at the time. Like, you know, before Indigo, it was blue back in the bootstrap days. That was like our primary color. Now today yeah. I would say like black is like the new, uh, the new Indigo, you know? Um, but yeah, we built everything with that as like the default brand color. And, uh, you know, a lot of people picked it up and, and built sites with it because it was the first sort of thing on the market for Tailwind and Tailwind was getting really popular at the time. Um, so a lot of sites on the internet ended up, people just didn't customize things. You know, they just grabbed it and just threw it up there and used it exactly as it was, which wasn't what we hoped people would do, but it is what people did. And um, I guess right around that era, you know, between, I'm guessing, you know, 2021, 2022, um, that's when the, the models started getting trained on all the Tailwind stuff out there and they all generate Tailwind stuff and that's the source material that existed. So I don't know, I do feel, uh, I do feel a little bit of guilt and feel like maybe we are partially <laughs> responsible for uh, seeding the machine with all of these uh, purple buttons and gradient headlines. Yeah. Can you, you probably can, you can probably eyeball like a, like a tailwind. Like we were, we were out for lunch the other day and, and Steve just eyeballed the version of the colors that you do. So it, like, what's it like just seeing it in, in the, I in don't the know. wild? Yeah, I, I can definitely spot a tailwind site from like the default color palette somehow, which is not something I expected to, to be able to do, but often yeah. can. 
but you guys you guys spent a lot of time picking the tailwind color palette right it's not just like one color and then you just add 10 percent no uh, yeah uh, like it was way. it was a big project that we we sat down and we designed a bunch of sort of like fake user interface examples of all different styles and tried to make sure that there was a logical place for every color so the colors aren't really necessarily like evenly spread out some of them are closer together because we want them to be able to work as like hover states on other colors and stuff like that um so they were all like hand picked and designed in context yeah you know, i've never really found um a tool that can just generate stuff that that felt as nice although there are some pretty good ones now and and i think a lot of the best ones almost try to like reverse engineer what we did by hand and turn it into some sort of algorithm. Second reason we have here is that many of these titans of design in our industry have been using purple. So if you ask anybody, hey, who's got the best looking app? Who's got the best looking website? Who's got the best designers? You're going to hear lots of answers, but you're going to hear the same thing of like linear, superhuman, Raycast. These types of companies have a very similar aesthetic to each other. And it's absolutely beautiful. And everybody looks at that and says, mm, I want my app to look like that. That's beautiful. So everybody else adds purple to their website. And before you know it, this beautiful design that they pioneered is, is used by absolutely everyone. It's not that the purple itself is bad design in the same way that linear is not good because it is purple. This isn't really even a video about purple at all. The point I'm trying to make here is that AI has raised the floor. It, table stakes have never been better. They're very good stakes, right? The starting bar has never been higher. You can get up and running very quickly with very good defaults. Now, for some things like spinning up a login form, the bare minimum experience is actually a pretty good experience. And that's awesome. We don't have to write that boilerplate code over and over again. We can focus on harder, more interesting problems. But here's the thing. The purple has become a tell. It's a sign that no extra thought went into it past what the AI has kicked out for you. And as AI keeps raising expectations of people using our applications, I think the bare minimum won't be enough. We've got to keep this pushing forward and further. Now, I'm not trying to turn this into some design conference talk where I post quotes from Steve Jobs and we all sit around and smell each other's farts with cool glasses on. But Design is subjective. Trends come and go. And the best ideas are getting copied over and over again until they're tired, until they no longer work, until they are poor qualities of what they're trying to imitate, until they're memes like purple, right? And the AI has simply just put that cycle on fast forward. So how do we fix this, right? You want your vibe coding an app. You don't want it to look like all the other slop that's out there. What are you to do? So the first and very probably obvious one is tell it you don't want it to be purple. Learn a thing or two about design because you have to be able to vocalize what it is you want. Some of you may need to be reminded that LLMs are simply just math at the end of the day. They are a bunch of numbers that are trying to predict what it is that you want. And if you do not give it the context for what it is that you are looking for, it's going to have a much harder time predicting that and it's going to use what it's been trained on. Do you have any tips for getting the LLM to make decent looking designs, things that are, are not purple? Dude, I, this is something I've been trying to, I, I'll be honest, I am struggling to get LLMs to produce to be useful in like a front end development context at all. Well, not front end, Honestly, just like getting it to do design related stuff has been challenging. I use it a lot for front end development when it comes to like, oh, can you extract this into a component? Can you do whatever? Like it's good at organizing yeah. code and moving stuff around and stuff like that. But uh, even just going like from a Figma design to code, I am struggling to find any way that that has that it can help me there so far. The closest that I've got so far, and I'm, I'm working on like some videos for this right now, is just really like tedious things. Like if a designer gives me like a Figma file and there's like a little design system artboard in there where they've got all the colors and fonts that they picked out, I can like take a screenshot of that and paste it into Claude and be like, update my Tailwind uh, config file to have all this stuff in it. And it'll OCR all the hex codes and stuff like that. So that'll save me a bit of time or even like using the Figma MCP server, I can say, I'll often say just like, can you just like 
generate the raw semantic HTML with no attempt at styling it, just to give me like the skeleton so I can style it. Because, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't even get it to, uh, to build a provided design, let alone like generate <laughs> a nice design on its own. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd love to crack that. But so far, I haven't, uh, haven't been able to do it. What about you? Yeah, we've been talking a lot about like uh, providing it, like design systems. How how much more important the like planning scope of things is is for this? You know, being able to provide it um, a design system, a whole bunch of examples, and like 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 you said, those almost have to be done entirely by hand first. Mm -hmm. Like you can scaffold out HTML and whatever, but um, and I think that's why the the LLMs like Tailwind so much is that you had all these beautiful, nice, concise examples that it can then project onto mm -hmm. to larger code bases. But um, if you just try to one shot it, boop, boop, boop in the text box and hope that a beautiful site comes out the other end, I think we, we haven't cracked that yet. Last point I have here is, is hire a designer or become a designer. Because I think now more than ever, the designers who are creative, the designers who are curious, the designers who explore things, the designers who look at what design was in the past and maybe what that looks like in the future, those are the people that are going to be paving the path for what future design actually looks like. And funny enough, AI is actually a very good tool at helping you do all of those things.